good morning, Bag of Buddies. Well, our adventure through Wales has taken us finally into the south, into Brecon Beacons National Park. We're staying at the Coach House, which is a lovely bed and breakfast uh, here in Brecon, which has supposedly one of the best breakfasts in all of Wales. It's 7.45 in the morning. We have an amazing day lined up. We're gonna be doing some mountain biking and exploring the Brecon Beacons National Park. Potentially some whiskey tasting, but before we get too far down the road, we're gonna start things off how we always start things off. All right, back buddies, we've just arrived at Talibant Reservoir, which is uh, cascading over here behind us. And we're meeting up with Luke. He is a mountain biker adventure guide. So we're here in Talibant Reservoir a little bit above the base of the Usk Valley. So we're going to go and check out the local area on the mountain bikes. Brecon Beacons National Park is uh, made up of uh, diverse mountain areas, um, forests, lakes, rivers, um, which means there's a huge variety of different scenery, there's a huge variety of different activities on offer, um, and there really is something for everyone. roads were actually old tramways like back in the day there were mines for limestone up in the hills and these trams would transport the limestone all the way down from here to a canal that would then float the, the, the goods out to Cardiff or to the industrial mills of Europe. A lot of people complain about the weather in this country, uh, but I personally really enjoy it. From a photography perspective, obviously there are lots of clouds, but when the sun breaks through those clouds, you get some really beautiful light playing with darkness, you know? Right as we got down to the river, it just started pissing down. Honestly, we're completely drenched. Probably as wet as if we had gone swimming back there, but definitely more dirty and happier. That was super fun, man. We're gonna wait for the rain to pass, and luckily here in the UK, there are plenty of rainy day options. So we are showered, we are warm, but the best way to warm up is of course... Whiskey. Whiskey. Whiskey is usually associated with Scotland or Ireland, but Wales makes whiskey too. We're in the town of Penderyn and we're at the Penderyn Distillery and we're gonna find out a little bit more about Welsh whiskey. You ready? I am. I'm gonna do one for the team. I'm gonna be the designated driver, so I will be sniffing, but not sampling. In the interest of science, I will be the guinea pig. I will. Be the brave one to test the whiskey. It's only fair because when we were in Bushmills in Northern Ireland, Mark did the same and I got to sample like 15 different whiskeys. So, enchanté mon frère. I'm David and uh, we're at Penderyn Distillery in, in South Wales and we're gonna taste some whiskey. About 16 years ago now, a couple of local people got together and they bought uh, this still uh, and started producing some, some whiskey here. What we're doing is we're getting malted barley we're essentially making a uh, kind of beer from it at first. We're adding hot water to break down the starch into sugar. We're fermenting the sugar with yeast uh, to get some alcohol. And we're purifying that alcohol uh, to get a spirit that's about 90% alcohol. And we're putting it into barrels for a couple of years. Uh, and we're finishing it for the last six months in different types to give it the different flavors. That's really nice. This is a special edition that we've done called the Independence, Penderin Independence. And uh, this one was for the American Independence because 16 of the signers were of, of Welsh descent. It's interesting how the Welsh have immigrated 
less than the Irish and the Scottish. The largest population of immigrants outside of Wales is in the US, um, also New Zealand and Australia, and even Patagonia. But sometimes we forget their influence on our own society. Mm. Well, this whiskey is a good way of remembering that. It smells like freedom. Thank you guys again, and we'll, we'll see you guys us. soon, hopefully. Thank you very much. Peace, guys. Thanks Thank again. Thanks, guys. Pretty excited there, brother? We have arrived at one of the more Marco places in the world, Heian Wai. This is an old market town which has become a mecca for book lovers, bibliophiles in general. There's a ton of different used bookshops here. Um, it kind of was formed by a media stunt in the 70s when a local guy um, declared it an independent kingdom and named his horse the prime minister and him the king. So we're gonna go check out this quirky little corner of Wales and see what we can find. So apparently Bill Clinton has called this place Woodstock for the mind. There are festivals around books, there's all sorts of bookshops, but the whole thing started with this guy named Richard Booth. So we're gonna go to the store that he founded right around the corner. Well, my name is Patricia Thornton and um, we're in Richard Booth's bookshop, second-hand bookshop in Hale and Wye. What was his fascination with books? Well, I just think he always loved books. He was up at Oxford um, reading history, I think. I think he spent an awful lot of time in second-hand bookshops while he was there. And at the time when he started, there were an awful lot of big old houses in Wales. They were so expensive to keep going, and a lot of them sold their libraries and he bought most of them. And he was his own best publicist, you know. He came up with this idea of making hay an independent kingdom. It wasn't serious, but it was, it was fantastic, really, because it really did put hay on the map. There's something about a used bookshop that is an intangible, loveliness. I think that it increases your chances of finding a random book rather than an algorithm suggesting books that it thinks you're gonna like. It shows you stuff that you probably would never have picked on your own. Oh my god, there's a book here, According to Mark. Yeah, so According to Mark. But this is not staged. This is by not the staged way. at all. This is because we're in the gospel section here. But According to Mark, or Marco, used bookshops should exist. This is a great one, and it's a perfect rainy day activity. Places like this are super cool because in the modern age, we're just so bombarded by, uh, by media and distraction. Whether it's uh, you know, Instagram posts and social media, it's really nice to come to a place where you're just surrounded by books. We got kicked out. We stayed till closing time, let's be real. We only got three books. We would have gotten 30, but we spent so much time filming and looking around that by the time we were done, it was closing time. So we only bought three books. Cycling and book perusing has kind of got me feeling pretty hungry. Should we go eat? God, you guys, we just got to Kangoid Hall, which is a five-star hotel and restaurant, uh, which looks like it's in this giant old manor, but we are about to have the best meal of the trip. Let's go. Kind of getting some shining vibes in here. Here, 
is Jenny. seated and greeted and given a nice Speyside scotch which is made by the hotel itself. This is a hotel and a restaurant but it was originally a castle. Uh, in 560 there was a settlement here where it hosted the one of the first Welsh parliaments. Uh, it was later turned into a country manor, restored and then become a hotel more recently. There's Nick Brodie, uh, we're at Langroyd Hall. I mean, we've got a, an extensive sort of kitchen garden. Uh, it started off with a, a sort of bare patch of Victorian garden and everything's been replanted. We've got a smoking house in, we've got a load of chickens, ducks. So we're always using those eggs somewhere along the line in the menus. At the Moose Bush, we just had a beautiful lobster, squid, prawn, bisque, and now we have hen egg for the starter. Well, that was amazing. It was refined, it was elegant, it was superlative in all forms. Mm. Honestly, I don't know what was better. The uh, surroundings, the artwork, the wine list, or the food, but combined, it was an unforgettable experience. And to put it on top of an epic day here in Brecon Beacons, I'm pretty much speechless. Anyways guys, let us know uh, what your favorite part of this video was. If you liked the bookshop, tell us what your favorite used bookstore is in your hometown. Let us know in the comment box below and we'll see you guys soon. If you guys like this video, you know what to do. Thumbs up, share with your friends, subscribe and turn on notifications if you have not already. And in the meantime, stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. Peace.